Skin aging isn't just one thing. We break it down into two main categories, intrinsic aging and extrinsic aging. So UV radiation is a major trigger, but things like pollution, smoking, poor diet, lack of sleep, and stress, like they all add up too. As we age, we also see the mitochondria, which are the energy centers in your cells, become less efficient, which then creates more oxidative stress. Smoking is probably one of the worst things you can do for your skin. Your skin does its best repair work while you sleep. So if you're not sleeping, you're going to get more dullness, dark circles, more fine lines, all the things we don't want. So I would say the most studied ingredient that helps with collagen production and reduces wrinkles is retinoids. All right, let's be real. We all want to keep our skin looking its best, but there's so much information out there. Some of it's great and some of it's well, not so much. So what really works, what's actually backed by science? That's exactly what we're diving into today. We'll break down the different types of aging, the science behind those pesky wrinkles, and most importantly, what you can actually do about it. So let's get started. And if you're new here, I'm Dr. Mamina Toregano, a triple board certified dermatologist, internist, and dermatopathologist. And I've been in private practice for over 11 years. I've been seeing treating patients for 16 years. So I've seen and learned a lot. Also, I am super passionate about helping you understand how lifestyle, environment, and science all come together to affect your skin. All right, first things first, skin aging isn't just one thing. We break it down into two main categories, intrinsic aging and extrinsic extrinsic aging. Intrinsic aging is what happens naturally. It's your body's built-in aging process, also called chronological aging. It's driven by your genetics, your internal biology, and hormonal shifts. Even if you've never seen the sun, you will still experience aging. With intrinsic aging, you'll start to notice thinner, drier skin, fine lines, and maybe even some sagging or volume loss. Now with extrinsic aging, that's a whole different story. This is caused by external factors and the biggest culprit, yep, the sun. So UV radiation is a major trigger but things like pollution, smoking, poor diet, lack of sleep, and stress, like they all add up too. This kind of aging shows up as deeper wrinkles, sagging, sunspots, dilated vessels called telangiectasia, and even precancerous lesions. We call those actinic keratoses. The good news, unlike intrinsic aging, we have a lot more control over extrinsic aging. Although I do like to believe we can have control of both. Let's geek out for a second and talk about what's actually happening in your skin. With intrinsic aging, skin cell turnover, slow down over time, your skin starts to lose that glow and it becomes just kind of more uneven and dull. Hormonal changes, especially during menopause, lead to thinner, more dehydrated skin. Your dermis, which is the deeper layer below the epidermis, starts losing collagen and elastin, so this means there's less firmness and more sagging. You also lose hydration, so your skin barrier gets weaker and, like I said, your skin looks more dehydrated. Okay, so let's just talk a little bit more on a deeper cellular level. I want to talk about something called telomeres or telomeres. These are essentially like the caps at the ends of your chromosomes. They're almost like plastic tips on your shoelaces. So anytime a cell divides, those tips shorten. Eventually they get too short and the cell can't divide anymore. And that's one of the core markers of aging. Like the cell just like stops working. As we age, we also see the mitochondria, which are the energy centers in your cells, become less efficient, which then creates more oxidative stress. Oxidative stress creates essentially a burden on our bodies and our bodies have to continue to fight and combat the stress and the stress continues to like break down our collagen and wreak havoc in our bodies and our skin and so we don't like that we don't like that we need our mitochondria to help us <laughs> eventually this all adds up to thinner duller drier less firm less elastic skin over time now let's talk about extrinsic aging my favorite part because we have a lot more control over this so the number one villain here is uv radiation sun exposure creates free radicals these are tiny molecules that damage your cells collagen and elastin that damage leads to wrinkles age spots and even skin cancer pollution same thing free radicals inflammation, irritation, and yep, accelerated aging. Smoking reduces blood flow, depletes nutrients, and breaks down collagen and elastin. Smoking is probably one of the worst things you can do for your skin. Stress is also huge when it comes to aging. When you have chronic stress, you have elevated cortisol levels, and that leads to accelerated aging. You have slower healing, you have more inflammation. And we know that sleep is a huge deal when it comes to skin health and overall health. So your skin does its best repair work while you sleep. So if you're not sleeping, 
you're gonna get more dullness, dark circles, more fine lines, all the things we don't want. And then blue light, yes, from your screens, it can penetrate deep into your skin and create oxidative stress. We talked about oxidative stress, we don't like that. It causes more problems in our skin, in our cells. Other culprits include things like poor diet, alcohol, too much caffeine, lack of exercise, air travel actually, harsh skincare products, and even how you sleep. We know that side sleepers and people who sleep on their stomachs actually have more wrinkles on their face. You know, sorry, sorry, I hate to break it to you because it's so hard to change sleep positions. And then there's also things we don't think about, things like our facial expressions that cause different wrinkles, our gum health, like our oral health, or also like how involved you are in your community. Like, do you have like close loved ones around? Do you connect with people? Everything is all connected. Your emotional health, your mental health, and your oral health, like all of these factors all play a role with stressors on our body. And those can eventually cause inflammation and also affect our collagen. But the cool thing is, is that a lot of this is within our control and that is very empowering. Okay, so now that we know all the things that are involved with aging, like let's talk strategy. What actually works to treat this stuff or to for prevent it. Number one is sun protection. SPF 30 or higher, we recommend wearing this every single day. A lot of people are like, wait, what if I don't go outside? Even if you don't go outside, we say just it's important to get into the habit of wearing it every single day. You never know if you're gonna be driving in your car or like stepping outside to do an errand of some sort, or if you're gonna be near a window. Also, don't forget there's other ways to protect your skin because sunscreen is not 100%. I'm a huge fan of sun protective clothing. You also wanna minimize the time that you're outside during like those peak sun hours, which is like the between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. or 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. and 10, depends on who you talk to. And then if you are outside, try to be in the shade. If you wanna learn more about other ways to protect your skin besides sunscreen, check out my video on all things sun protection. Next, let's talk about a topic that everyone wants to know about, and that is evidence-based skincare. Let's talk about all the ingredients that really work to help reduce wrinkles and improve the collagen. All right, so I would say the most studied ingredient that helps with collagen production and reduces wrinkles is retinoid. So retinoids includes things like retinol, tretinoin, retin-A. These are all vitamin A derivatives. The prescription forms are like tretinoin. The brand is retin-A. There's also tazerotene. The brand is Tazerac. These all help to remodel collagen. They can also help improve texture. They increase skin cell turnover. So they can also help, like the prescription forms can also help with acne because it's like unclogging your pores. But long-term, these do help smooth out your skin. I'm also a huge fan of peptides. These are signaling molecules that tell your skin to produce more collagen. There's so many other different types of peptides. There's peptides that can hydrate the skin. There's peptides that can uh, like dictate your muscle movement. But yeah, so there's a lot of good ones out there, but namely, I really like the ones that help increase collagen production. And then of course there's antioxidants. We are huge fans of antioxidants. The most popular and well-studied one is probably vitamin C. You hear Durham's talk about vitamin C all the time. Other antioxidants include things like niacinamide and resveratrol. And these all work to fight free radicals, which are the unstable molecules that like to wreak havoc and cause damage in our tissues. So we're big fans. Vitamin C also is helpful for just improving radiance in the skin. It can brighten the skin. It can decrease dullness and improve like unevenness in your skin tone. I'm also a huge fan of growth factors. These are molecules that also send signals to increase collagen production and they also are really helpful for just repairing the skin. You probably have also heard the term hyaluronic acid. We like hyaluronic acid not necessarily because it remodels collagen. It actually just increases the hydration in your skin. So for people with kind of drier skin, that really does improve the look of your skin. It can increase plumpness. It can increase that dewy, glowy, hydrated look. And then of course, it's important to exfoliate regularly. The class of exfoliants that I'm the biggest fan of are AHAs, alpha hydroxy acids, things like glycolic acid, lactic acid, mandelic acid. These can smooth and resurface the skin and promote increased skin cell turnover so you have more even skin. And then AHAs like glycolic acid can even work deeper under the surface to help remodel collagen and further help with fine lines and wrinkles. All right, next let's talk about lifestyle. This is one of my favorite parts. So when it comes to food, an antioxidant-rich diet is super important. I have a whole video dedicated to food and skin, so be sure to check that out. But we like food that is really like the full spectrum color of the rainbows, foods rich in vitamin A, vitamin C, in different other antioxidants, polyphenols, resveratrol, lycopene, beta carotene. So yes, basically the cliche of eating your fruits and vegetables. We also know that exercise is 
really important, whether it's just walking, aerobic exercise, even strength training, we're seeing more evidence that them like building more muscle is important for overall anti-aging. And then of course, we know that sleep is so important, especially getting that uninterrupted, deep restorative sleep. And I think a lot of us don't really do that, um, but that's huge. We also know that stress plays an enormous role, as I mentioned earlier, for our skin health. So finding ways to manage stress, and that just seems like such a loaded piece of advice. Um, it's like, okay, where do I begin? Do I go see a therapist? Like, do I go meditate? Yes, all those things can be helpful. Something that I found to be helpful, and it's like so simple, is just like taking the time once a day to think of like three things you're grateful for. And it like helps shift your perspective a little bit because stress is all about perspective. and things may not be as bad as we think they are. So if you can optimize these aspects in your life, you can help fight inflammation, you can preserve your collagen, as well as strengthen your skin barrier. A lot of people also ask about supplements, and I definitely think they can play a role too with skin aging. I think one of the most well-studied supplements are collagen peptides. I do think we need more studies, but they definitely are showing promising results. Um, specifically, I would look for type one and type three collagen peptides, and it would be extra helpful if they are paired with things like vitamin C, hyaluronic acid and zinc. There's also amino acid supplementation. So things like glycine, proline, and lysine, these can also send signals to help build collagen. And like I mentioned earlier, antioxidants are huge. There's a lot of different antioxidants that you can get through food. Sometimes just through food is not adequate for many people. And so supplementing with things like extra vitamin C, astaxanthin, resveratrol, coenzyme Q10, EGCG, which is derived from green tea. There's also glutathione. There are a lot of different well-studied antioxidant ingredients out there and stay tuned because I'm gonna talk more about them in another video. Another supplement that I think is great for just overall skin health is omega-3s, whether it's fish oil-based or plant-based. There's a lot of anti-inflammatories with omega-3s and definitely can help with a lot of different skin inflammatory issues, whether it's eczema, rosacea, and psoriasis and it's important for just helping with the health of your skin barrier. We also know that inflammation can accelerate aging. So yes, we want kind of more anti-inflammatory things in our body. Also, don't forget about probiotics because we know gut health is super important when it comes to our skin. We're learning more and more about how a disrupted microbiome in our gut can play a role with skin issues. Of course, we're seeing things with acne, psoriasis, eczema, but we're also seeing a connection with accelerated skin aging in our gut health. So optimizing your gut health with GI friendly foods, but also probiotics too. And we're seeing promise with that. There are strains that have been shown to help with collagen production. So stay tuned for more on that. And then of course, when it comes to skin aging, professional treatments can really probably make one of the biggest differences in your skin. Dermatologists offer a variety of different things in our practice. Things that I typically recommend to help with just aging and evening out skin tone are things like chemical peels, Microneedling, I love neuromodulators, things like Botox and Dysport to just help diminish the look of fine lines. And of course, laser treatments, which can either resurface the skin or work deeper in the collagen level to remodel the collagen and tighten the skin. Of course, always consult a derm to find out what procedure is right for you. And let's be real, there are a lot of anti-aging myths or misconceptions out there. There is not a product that is gonna completely erase your wrinkles overnight. There's no magic cream and no, you can't stop aging entirely, unfortunately. I know Brian Johnson's trying to do that, but um, you can definitely delay it. I'm so curious though what, what he's gonna do. I think Dave Asprey too. So you can delay aging and you can improve your skin's health and it all starts with consistency and following science back products and choices and lifestyle changes. So there you have it, the real science back truth about skin aging and ways to prevent it or delay it. What's one thing you're gonna change in your routine after watching this? Let me know in the comments below. If this was helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more skincare science and share this video with somebody who would love this too. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.